Okay. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, we have a couple more hours uh, until the Fed uh, reports uh, what they're going to do, as I mentioned this morning. The market, I won't even say my suspicion, I just kind of agree with what the broader market, you know, the futures uh, and all that tell us. I agree with that, which is that the Fed is going to pause saying that they need, to, at least I hope so, because these people are real freaking dunces. Uh, but then, you know, I think that anyway, they're not good at their jobs. But what they are probably going to do is pause and say, well, you know, we want to see how what we've done so far. And of course, uh, we're also concerned that if we raise any more, we're going to get more regional bank blowups. So they'll kind of pause. They're not going to say all that crap, but that's what they're doing. Um, and then, but then at the same time, they'll say, hey, we're probably not done. Inflation's too hot. For some reason, we still are targeting a 2% annual inflation, which is, yes, I know, wishful thinking, but hey, we're the Fed. We do that all the time. Uh, embrace it. So, you know, they're going to say something, something like that, like pause now, but probably raise later. And the question is, what is the market going to do? If we just look at the weekly chart, you know, you can see we're just coming out of a pretty big base, a pretty profound base. And my bet is that ultimately we move higher. You know, I mentioned that um, on uh, Charles, Charles Payne's show last week that I really had a, uh, a 4,800. I might've even said 40. No, I think I said 48. Like I had a 4,800 handle on where I'm thinking this is going to go this year. And when you think about it, uh, we're not even, you know, we're halfway through June. We're not even into the second half of the year. And all we need is a little bit less than 10% to the upside. And so to get that number, you know, frankly, I think I think it's kind of a lead pipe cinch simply because the markets rallied in the face of some pretty devastating uh, interest rate hikes by the Fed. And so when the Fed does, in fact, pause, unless things run off, a, you know, fall off a cliff, which I don't think is going to happen. But when the Fed does pause, then you're going to see money coming in. You're going to continue to see it um, coming in to uh to small caps and mid caps because those are the companies that need the money hence why they're small and mid cap stocks they're poorly capitalized uh they want to be the big kids on the block but right now they're not so that's kind of what i'm seeing what i think is going to happen um long term but as i often say because it's often true you want to always be protecting your downside you want you know, you you really want to see your equity curve, and, and it can this can be tough. I know, you want to see your equity curve doing. You know, sometimes it'll do this, but you, you know, you you want to see it doing this type of thing, um, even if it totally flatlines. Where you're saying, I don't like this market. I'm not really. Uh, I don't really feel it. I'm not seeing any good setups, and so. You know, I'm just going to sit on the sidelines for a while and I'm not, and maybe I have some personal stuff going on. Like sometimes I have to do that uh, where I go, you know what? I got personal stuff that's dominating my time and my energy and my concentration. Last thing I want to do is be trading money when I have a dull edge. Um, and so, you know, I'll shut it down for a while. My equity curve goes flat. What it doesn't do is that. That's what you want to avoid because. If if you if you know if you take a bunch of losses or you get stubborn, you're down to here below where you were. Say when you started the year, the day, the month, uh, you know whatever it is, you're down here. Now, what you've wanted to do, what your goal has been, is to keep this moving higher, like this. Okay, so let's say instead of doing that, you took this. So now from here, you're back to reaching your goal and getting this kind of equity curve up like this. Well, now where are you? Okay, you're not up here like you would have been if you just stayed flat. Instead, you know, you've got the same exact uh, movement here in your account equity 
only it's from a lower level. And see, this is where the math will get you. Uh, if you lose 25, if you if you lose 20%, you've got to make 25%. If you lose 25%, you've got to make uh, 33% just to get back to even. So the numbers don't work as soon as you take a big loss or as soon as you have a real significant equity drawdown. So you want to avoid this and just keep this going. But what you shouldn't be doing is expecting that. Sometimes in any given day or week, you're going to get this. You will get this big spike up. Again, you never want to get that, but you will get this. And you're engaging in magical thinking if you just think it's going to continue on and on and on. It won't. When the market gets the easiest, that's when actually uh, that's when it's the most dangerous because trading just really isn't easy. It's hard. And as soon as you embrace the fact that it's hard, then it's really not hard anymore. It's just trading. But there's a lot of uh, discipline in that. And of course, discipline is, is actually useless. It's actually habits. You need to fit, you need to create good habits and then you don't need discipline um, for that. Uh, I brush my teeth every night. Among other, I brush them in the morning too. It's a habit of mine. I, it doesn't take discipline uh, for me to do that. Uh, every once in a while, I'll you know get in bed and then go, oh crap, I didn't brush my teeth. So what do I do? Say, ah, I'll do it tomorrow morning. No, I get up and brush my teeth because that's what I do. Uh, there are a lot of things in trading like that too. Uh, you don't take big losses. Well, why? How do you avoid that? Well because I take small losses. If I'm, if I'm wrong on a trade, I take the loss. It's, it's not a discipline. It's a habit, okay? Trading is about developing good habits. And from good habits come good processes. If this is foreign to you, you need to figure this crap out. You're a gambler. I don't want you to be gambling. I've seen them come and go. I've been doing this on uh, the first iteration start 20 years ago in 2003. Um, then I reinitiated it with uh, videos just because of the, uh, you know, development and software and stuff like that in 2006. I've seen a lot of gamblers come and go. Every single one that's come has gone. So if you want to stick around, whether it's here or anywhere else, I hope you do here. But if you want to stick around, you need to be focusing on trading as a business. Um, when you, if you own a retail store, when you leave for the day, what do you do? You get in your car and go home, right? No, wrong. You turn around, and you lock the damn door behind you. Why? Is that discipline? No, it's a habit. <clears throat> and by the way, <laughs> speaking of a habit in that case, uh, how did you start developing that habit? Well, I think it was because the one time that you decided that, um, it, you know, that it wasn't important to you, that you just, you forgot to, to do it. Well, then what happens? You wake up the next morning and all your Lululemon stuff is, is cleaned out. You know, that is a thing going around these days. Um, and anyway, uh, don't let me start. Don't get me started on that. Um, so it's the same way with trading. You know, you lock the door. You make sure that you're not going to get your money lifted by the market because you were undisciplined. So you lock the door, you brush your teeth, you set your stops, you manage your position size, you manage your emotions. Uh, you never start to think that you've got the market wired because as soon as you do start to think that, well, it turns out that you don't. And how do you learn that? Because the market tells you. Okay, so I want you just to, as that saying goes, stick to your knitting. Uh, I don't know what that means, but stick to it. Okay. So what do we got here? Okay. Netflix. Um, you, this has been a really good run here. Uh, I want to raise the stop to 416.50. Now we got in back here uh, at a really good price. Um, you know, this is, we kind of caught it at, at just the right, at just the right time on the 17th. So um, we're really up over a hundred bucks on this. So uh, I think the trend continues. 
And, you know, look, as, as you look at this stock, does it look like this could be the peak? Um, maybe, but it sure doesn't look like it to me. It looks like we're just starting to run here and, you know, we'll probably even get up to 500. So I want to stay long this stock, but at the same time, you got to be protecting these kinds of profits. They don't come along all the time. And so you, I, I'm, you know, putting the stop here, but you may want to, as I mentioned in this morning's note, uh, you may want to be handling this a little bit differently if you're looking at Netflix and saying, well, I want to hold this for a big gain. I want to hold it at least for 500 or whatever. You can absolutely do that. But at the same time, you know, you look at how much your trade is up. You know, right now, your trade is up 30%. So maybe that's a lot of your account. Maybe um, this 30% uh, move is a lot, you know, takes up a lot of the uh, money, or I can't think about the right way to say it, in, in your account, because perhaps you take took a big position in the first place. So now um, your trading account is overweight Netflix. And by the way, hey, man, good for you. You're up 30% for crying out loud. The only way that could be better is if you were up 40 um, so it's all good, but maybe you look at this and say, I want to take a little bit off the table and book those profits, because if I do that, it actually drops my average cost basis in my remaining position down quite a bit. And so it gives me more uh, leeway to just let this thing run and hold for a bigger gain. Now, this is your decision. I'm just giving you possibilities. And over the years, I have, I got to tell you, it's one of the things that makes me the happiest when it comes to business is when I, with this business, is when I see people in the forum. And I kind of know anybody who posts it with any frequency, you know, I know who you are. Um, I, I, I track actually uh, pretty closely. So anybody that I see who's been struggling, and then after a while, they, they don't struggle. After a while, they're, you know, and they'll post and say, hey, Dan, guess what I did? Uh, I got it. I did this. You know, I had a good entry and I'm happy and, you know, still holding some. That really makes me happy um, because that person is developing their trading skills. That person is gaining financial security. Maybe not, in fact, probably not enough to where you say, hey, I can quit my job and I'm just going to trade. Now, hopefully in your twilight years, say when you've retired, this is exactly what you do. I know this, I know this is exactly what a lot of you are doing is, you know, you've, you've done your stint in the workforce. Maybe you have your own business, but you really, really love trading. And now you're, a point, you're at a point in your financial security in your life to where you say, hey, man, I love the market and I love trading. I'm going to do it. You're doing that type thing. And when you start trading consistently, that doesn't mean batting a thousand. You're not going to. But when you start trading consistently and your equity curve looks like the one that I just drew, then that gives you some financial security. And that makes me really happy. Um, what I do and what Scott do is does is really flipping hard. You have no idea how much time and energy and love I put into this business that was almost taken away from me uh, a couple of years ago. Um, but I fought that deal and now I have the business. So I've put in a lot of time and a lot of energy into this. Okay, well, you know, woe is me, right? No, this is my passion. I love doing it. I wouldn't have it any other way. However, what really gets me going is when I see somebody else reaping the fruits of my labor that I'm working so hard and I'm trying to teach this the right way that somebody is saying, hey, I got it. I got it. Then I'm going like, yes, this is why I do what I do. And at the same time, though, when I see someone continuing to struggle, or they email me or something, and, and I'm thinking to myself, God, 
oh, you've been here for quite a while and you still, you just don't seem to be getting it. Then I start second guessing myself and think, well, what am I doing wrong? How can I help this person? Because for whatever reason, they're not getting it. That makes me sad. And so I guess I'll put it this way. Try to make me happy, not sad, okay? Because if you're making me happy, you're happy too, okay? So anyway, I guess that's my little pep talk here on Wacky Wednesday. So what we want to do here with Netflix is you want to let this thing run if you're more of a long-term holder. And you, you know, you can say, oh, but look at the Bollinger Bands are so wide. You know, yeah, yeah. They were narrow here and they got really wide um, back here. 32, probably wider now, huh? Um, now about 35, that's about right, you know? But then look how wide they got here at one point. It's like literally be off the charts until the stock finally starts running. I look at this on a uh, on a weekly level. I look at this as a volatility squeeze. So uh, if you like holding things for bigger gains, um, you want to do this. But you can also look at, say, um, the 10-day uh, moving average here, and you can set a stop, just kind of a trailing stop below that on some of your um, positions. So anyway, so we're raise, I'm raising the suggested stop here at 416.50. Now, NVIDIA, um, this thing's still going like a champ. It's up um, a buck 80 and uh, just kind of peeking out. Uh, you know, above the near-term resistance. Now it's pulling back a little bit. Uh, I'm raising my stop to 386, uh, 386, because I don't want to give back um, gains. Depending on when you got in, I, I tracked two entries here. You're either in at 281.50, which is pretty nice when the stock's at 417, or you're in at 292.50. 34. Also a pretty nice uh, run. So you're up between 100 and 110 bucks in gain if you just kind of did what I what I suggested. You know, sometimes it works out, sometimes it didn't. Um, this time it did. The thing that is really interesting to me is today, and I was mentioning this, I mentioned this last week uh, to uh, I'm pretty sure to Charles, I, I know it was in my notes about NVIDIA. And um, I said that the challenge, the challenge in this market in the GPU um, uh, graphic processing unit is that NVIDIA has such a head start on the AI um, space that they've got these massive margins. And then a competitor like AMD and maybe a few others looks at these margins and says, well, your high margins are my great opportunity. And so they can start eating into your margins as they, they create a competitor. And so I have always felt like NVIDIA needs some, some kind of competitor to keep from running away with it. So in comes AMD with an announcement today, right? So this is up 2% AMD. Uh, is up two and three quarter or two and a quarter, excuse me, two and a third percent. So that's fine. But at the same time, NVIDIA has been on a run. AMD has not. And so I would look at this and say the market's kind of, you know, yawning at what AMD is doing relative to NVIDIA. Um, and so we want to stick with, a excuse me, we want to stick with NVIDIA. Um, but, uh, um, okay. Anyway, sorry. I had to take a break because my little Mexican street dog was going nuts outside. I think she saw a cockroach. Um, anyway, so I like AMD, but I like NVIDIA more, not that. And I like NVIDIA more because it's working really well. Um, big move here, AMD, uh, still kind of trending higher as well, but also I want you to keep something in mind. These uh, these stocks, especially um, especially Nvidia, have you know they they've really been running. They've really been running a lot. And so if you look at AMD, this is the relative strength line relative to the SPY. This has just been kind of drifting 
sideways, maybe down just a little bit. NVIDIA had been kind of marking time here. Now it's now it's moving back up. And so this is actually kind of, you know, still beating the market, still uh, performing really well, but it's not exactly shooting the lights out. And so I look at this and I see that, you know, we've kind of got a little slowing here. Um, so just be careful uh, with this stuff. Know what your worst case scenario is. Um, okay, and then Monday, uh, still just grinding sideways. Just remember, I'm not going to spend any time on this. I put this on the list because I knew I was doing an analysis with Charles Payne. And uh, so I always try to give people a heads up here so you don't see me in one of those uh, you know, media things when I'm in my monkey suit um, talking about a stock that you're saying, well, I didn't know about that. Um, so anyway, don't buy this, just watch it. Um, it, you know, it's a watching stock right now. Uh, and then the Russell is doing okay. We want to, again, we want to see this start moving higher again. If the Russell, uh, small caps, uh, and then the spiders, mid caps, if they continue to move higher, that bodes well for the broader, uh, market. Um, and, you know, we like to see, I like to see the equal weighted index, moving up. If you um, compare that with the S&P, as I mentioned, uh, I think it was just on Monday, um, these are now starting to move in sync as opposed to the equal weight down and the S&P sideways. And so this is a good, this is a good thing for the market. Um, shorter term, I'm again, I'm shorter term, I'm looking for a, a little bit of a pullback or at least a pause. And by the way, the shallower the pullback, the stronger the market. So it'd be awesome if we got a really shallow pullback, but then at the same time, assuming you're protecting your positions, it would be almost even better to get a really deep pullback because I still think there are better days ahead. And so if we got a pretty deep pullback, um, you've managed your risk, you've got your profits protected. Now you're in a position to capitalize on the next on the next big move rather than just kind of tiptoeing around on a market that's looking kind of overbought. Okay. Um, now, uh, Microsoft. Um, okay, so it was up uh, like eight but we're up about eight bucks from where we were and i just had just put that on um yesterday and so you know i just want to i want to stick with this um okay this is for something else for options um i want to just stick with this and and let it run um our stops at 319.50 uh and i'll just keep that there uh for now and then finally Arc is another one I put on yesterday. We're up like what one percent? Um, not a big deal on this at all. And I put this. If you recall, I said, "Hey, just because I haven't put it on, I'm going to put it on now." Arc. Um, this is kind of the ultimate speculative, um, you know, ETF. You guys know what this is all about. But it looks to me like it's just kind of coming out of a basing pattern. Might be starting a markup, which if the market continues to move higher, I do think you're going to wind up seeing this um, outperforming. Uh, that's, you know, that's pretty much uh, my bet anyway. Uh, if we look at this on the daily chart again, relative strength versus the S&P, we see this continuing to move higher. So if you're just looking at relative strength, this is really where you want to be. Um, just know again, it is a, um, you know, it's a different type of trade than I typically put on. So anyway, um, that is it. Uh, just wanted to give you the heads up on this. Um, if the, if the market does anything wacky, then, uh, you know, I'll get back on here and, and we'll do kind of a, a, a recap of what's going on. But, uh, I think this is a pretty good summary of, of where we are right now. Um, you guys, uh, if you're more active, you really need to be in the forum. There's a lot of great traders in there and they're really, really generous with ideas. I won't mention any names because I'm sure I'll leave someone out, but just go in there and check it out. Okay. Also, um, get on Telegram if, if you want, you know, and by the way, you know, it doesn't cost anything, so I'm not selling anything. 
on that. You, you know, it really, the only reason it matters to me that you're on is because it gives you more value. You know, you don't have to give up your phone number, though, even if you did, you know, I'm not going to be spamming you like all this other crap. How many people get uh, texts uh, saying that their Netflix account, there's something wrong. So click here and get it all figured out. Um, <laughs> you're not going to get that stuff uh, from me, but we don't, I don't even want your, your number. So if you get on Telegram, you're going to get, it, it will, enable you to avoid having to check emails or be in the forum all the time. That's really what it's about. It's a convenience thing. It's a value builder for you. That's it. It's, this is for you. It's not for me. If you can, if you want, want to get fast information rather than having to keep refreshing your email all the time, you know, that's a way you can do it, but it's certainly not necessary. And the only thing you would be missing out on if you're not on there is the timing of the information that you get. There's no secret channels over there. It's just a transmission uh, thing. Uh, nobody can talk to anybody. It's just, it's the same thing as texting. So anyway, um, that's it. And I will see you guys uh, later. Okay. Have a good one.